Research shows that the conscious mind can hold seven things at once and the unconscious, infinite. Why do I create is the, is the more uh, salient question. And I look at it as being just a, a sort of personal imperative. You know, it's such a natural way to communicate. We're all improvising all the time, life's an improvisation. You never know someone until you've improvised with them. You know someone's character and, and, and you're at that sort of level and it's, 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 it's quite intimate. It was a pure expression of emotion in the form of what was coming out the end of my instrument. I would say that that's only happened to me maybe three or four times in my entire life and moments like that are quite special. I like the liberation of just being in control of what I do and say at any given point. That sort of common bond you can have between musicians when something really special happens. And maybe it's, there's more permission to make mistakes or for mistakes to be interesting and mistakes to be acceptable and generate interesting new material. Different people improvise together, you all of a sudden get into areas and you say, wow, this, this sounds great or that's really uh, exciting. You can join in, you can compliment, you can support, you can interrupt, you can go in a huff, it doesn't matter what you do. So in a sense it kind of reflects everyday life as well. Glasgow Improvisers Orchestra. It's a large improvising ensemble based in, based in Glasgow. It's a group of musicians who all come from very different backgrounds. Some learned and read and academic. Many who aren't professional musicians. It makes for a more kind of open musical environment. There are around about 25 musicians in the band. Piano, flute, trombone, cello player, drums, French horn, flute, trumpet, double bass, a drummer, sax, oboe, the piccolo, bass player, trombone, rhodes, piano, saxophone, corongue, the double bass. The common goal amongst all is uh, a type of free approach to music. I mean, we're very fortunate with a very small nucleus of people and great support from the band that we've got such an international concert happening over this weekend. This is our fifth festival and it's sort of celebrating our 10th anniversary. So we've been able to bring together some of the most sort of influential collaborators that have worked with us over the past 10 years. Maggie Nichols. Evan Parker. George Lewis, the composer who's over from, from California. Make a very special welcome to our old friend, George. Great to be back. Thanks everybody for making it possible. And he's not only a wonderful trombonist, but he's a world-renowned composer, electronic mu musician, and also as an academic. He's very eminent in terms of his, his, his academic writing and his thinking on, on, on music. And he brings all those skills and all that experience to bear when he comes to, to work with us. George just really thinks through in great depth about the whole philosophical um, and dynamic issues to do with ensemble playing and construct pieces that address that in a very, really thorough and, and beautiful, inspired way. Just has an, an incredible way of being. Um, so he puts everybody immediately at ease. So it, he's just a wonderful person to be in a room with, regardless actually of what music you're playing. What the devil are we gonna do today? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> when you Maggie Nichols, wonderful improvising singer, and she's performing tonight with the Rope and Duck Company. Friday night with the, the Rope and Duck Company, which is myself and, and Una, and that was a really special thing for me. I feel a really strong connection with Maggie since the first time that she came up, and to get on stage and just let her do her thing and be there with her was really amazing. So that was definitely a, a highlight of my life, I think, not only the, not just the festival. It doesn't matter that you wobble, you waver, or you croak. Do not apologise for your beautiful voice. Maggie's a pretty renowned educator, so we thought we'd take the opportunity while she was up to have her one, one of her workshops, which is pretty inspirational. I love workshops. I love that it's a privilege to actually be trusted to, to work with people who, and we're all vulnerable, and especially people that have never improvised, and to find safe ways of enabling us all to, to, to trust ourselves and to trust each other and to trust the music and the process, and that to me is just sheer joy.
beautiful. Well, Evan Parker, he came in and worked with us when we were just getting the band up and running, so he's obviously a really significant figure in free improvisation, but also for this band, we've had a real connection with him over the years and played with him quite a lot. George had already been working on his uh, improvising computer or interactive computer program. I've been wanting to do electronic music with Evan for a while uh, around sound real-time processing, interactive computer programs that basically perform uh, in real time with musicians and listen and respond. And they're pretty much musicians rather than processors. I've done several different incarnations of the program because it keeps getting more elaborate and uh, sophisticated. Tonight, the Schlippenbach Trio. <laughs> Alex von Schlippenbach, Evan Parker and Paul Lovins are playing and I guess they're sort of widely recognised as a what you might call a free jazz supergroup. They've been playing together for 40 years. It's a rare appearance for them in, in Scotland. I think there's going to be a packed house specifically to come and, come and hear them. But working with um, a group called Sonic Bothy, which is um, it's a new group, but uh, it's an inclusive group. Some some of the individuals have uh, additional learning needs. They've been working on um, different improvisational techniques for the last six weeks. It happened to coincide with the festival, so I thought it'd be great to, to bring them in to the festival as well and give them a chance to perform, which they did beautifully. George Burt has developed a new piece. Uh, for Edwin Morgan, it's called Three Envelopes for Edwin Morgan, and that will involve Tam Dean Burns. At that time I was working on Edwin Morgan's play of Gilgamesh. I met George in that, and then they, uh, they approached me afterwards um, to come and do this with him. My chestnut chill. Uh, Tam Dean Burns is a, an actor uh, who will be reading this stuff. But he's very focused on the text, so the story of the text has to come out. So one of the things I'm hoping to find out this afternoon is how the musicians and the text will work together. Um, we won't really know until we perform it, really, I don't think. Stick it! Do spoke! This poetry works so well with it, and it's so in keeping of it. God, I love it, and I'm just really hoping uh, it comes to pass there's more of it uh, to come. Uh, Fantastic. Good evening, uh, and uh, welcome to the Shetland Improvisers Orchestra. It's our second gig. The Shetland Improvisers Orchestra have come down from Shetland to, to work with us. It's, it's a, a new group, but it's, it's great to, to, ha to be able to welcome another sort of large improvising ensemble to the festival. I really enjoyed listening to the Shetland Improvisers Orchestra as well. It's really exciting to see people from that far away in Scotland um, out there playing, playing our music <laughs> or the kind of thing that we love. We've had a piece of music specially written for us by Jim O'Rourke, who's an American musician living in Japan. I'd given Jim some of the orchestra's music and he produced a, a really fascinating, wonderful, wonderful piece. It's written on the back of 104 Japanese playing cards. We have two um, specific instructions that have our names on them that we always are going to perform, and then two wild cards, and we won't see any of the cards until we perform the piece. I just asked Jim, I said, well, you, you can't, you know, I know you can't come to hear the piece, but if we were to hook up a Skype link, would you listen to us perform the piece and, and tell, us, tell us what you think? If there's a chance for it to be funny, that's fine, but I mean, better for it to be off kilter than to be funny. As well as all the musical instructions, there are instructions including removing pieces of clothing, going to the bar and buying drinks. I have an instruction that I have to tie a small percussion instrument to Raymond's arm at a certain point. We've rehearsed it and it's been quite um, unpredictable, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that will uh, actually happen in a, in a kind of in a real-time performance you know. Um, the next piece we're going to play is a piece uh, by Jim O'Rourke but I've got a pack of cards here with instructions on the back that I'm going to give out now and each musician will get two cards. 
music I made in that piece, in my opinion, was my duet with the, uh, with the rubber chicken that was tied to Raymond's arm. I think that adding a little bit of humour into a piece like Jim's allows the audience to feel more a part of it and to feel that they're genuinely being entertained. It's lovely to see how, uh, how different people approach the issue of um, ensemble playing. You know, so Jim O'Rourke with the, the, the cards, it, this, it's very playful. And at the same time, again, his concept is very much about it being a free improvisation that has these punctuations. I can confess right now, whoever wants to take me out for a bit of haggis after the show can do that. I think the very fact that a large group of people from such diverse musical backgrounds exists and has continued to get funding and, and has attracted an audience is quite amazing and it's just important that that continues. The orchestra is full of very strong individuals who have got strong opinions and at the same time there's this willingness to try different things and be open to all the different people who've come and worked with, with them. They're really open, and I love that about Geo. The sensitivity of the people and the, the uh, seriousness with which they approach their, their playing, but at the same time it's not uh, dour, you know, it's, there's, there's room for uh, levity and a laugh. I think Geo's been through a lot of evolution, and I could hear the results, I mean, last night. the. The incredible way in which page one of my piece was played was followed up by an absolutely riveting improvisation which was similarly diverse. I don't think I remember a time when 26, 27 people could be so sensitive with each other. I think that's a part of what you get after 10 years of working together and finding new ways of doing things, truly new ways of creating music. The excitement and the thrill that I get from working with other people in improvisatory context is something that keeps bringing me back for, for more and keeps pushing me to try and uh, you know, find new ways of, of working and new, new ways of, of collaborating. So I guess the, 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 the connections that you make with other people, the communication that you have with other people when you're working in an improvisatory context. In an improvised context for me, the, the, that, the, the, the communication is the key element. To it.